All right, so I promised myself that I was gonna make an end of year summary video of this academic year in Loughborough University as well as my course product design. But then I realized how hard it is to make this video because I gotta make it short, yet informative and somewhat interesting. Anyway, so before I begin, I just want to warn you guys who are potential Loughborough Design School students that this is my and only my opinion and your opinion of this place may vary when you come all over and likely because most of my friends or people I know from design school agree with majority of the things that I feel and don't take my word for it your experience might be completely different there's also a script to my laptop in case I keep looking down like that's the reason So to pretty much sum up this year of prog design and probably the same as industrial design, I've split the year into three sections. First, I'd like to call the almost useless and obvious don't go to any lectures and do the tests or coursework or whatever modules, which is pretty much what I refer to as like the free credit modules. The next one is the physical workshop and lab sessions, which I like to call the physically hard or painful to achieve credit modules. And the most important and infamous DP1, which is what I like to call the lot of time spent for a lot of credits or the only module which credits and workloads seem to be sort of balanced and right, which is strange because that's what all modules should be. And of these categories, I also like to split it into three different types of difficulties or workloads, which include the GCSE, which is the work the week before or even the night before and still achieve a very high grade. The A-level, which you could do a month before and struggle, or just start early and just get it all done. And last of all, which is the uni level, and this is basically where you better start to work, literally when they set it, because even if you start when they set it, you probably will still fall behind, so never leave this stuff last minute, it just won't get completed. So enough of that, let's get into listing the modules we had for this year as the first year of design school. This year we had 8 modules, which consisted of research methods. This is something about researching data useful for part of the third year, but feels completely irrelevant now. Design context, I have no idea what that is. User centered, which is pretty much ergonomics and anthropometrics, stuff you learn at A-levels, but just brought to a new level. Materials and processing, which is pretty much a bit of GCSE level chemistry and a lot of processing from A-level DT, such as injection molding, blow molding, um, die casting, just all that kind of stuff. Prototyping, which is essentially workshops. Electronics, which is physics. Mechanics, which is also physics. And last of all, DP1, or design practice one, which is what you probably thought you signed up for when you joined design school. All right, so enough of that. Let's get on to the free credit modules first. So the first module is called research methods. And to be honest, I can't remember anything I've done in this module, which just proves how useless it is and also the fact I didn't go to any lectures. All I know is this last piece of submission we had done was for a research project for a poster and a report. And I think it's to do with like laundry services or something. I'll just put it right there real quick. And essentially what this module should be doing is teaches us how to research and just going through stuff like how to be ethical, like methods of researching what is being observant or what I like to think of as spying or being more upfront and engaging and stuff like that. I don't actually know what's going on in this module. The next module is called Design Context, and not gonna lie, I literally have no clue at all what this is about, literally zero. All I know is that in terms of submissions, we had a presentation about eco-design. Don't know why, we got 76% as a group, which is well above a first, 6% above a first. And I guess they like my part because they seem to mention a lot in the feedback sheet. Totally being modest here. And that's all I've got, sorry. I literally don't know what this module is. The next one is called user-centered design, which is actually quite interesting in terms of the useless modules. We have this really interesting lecturer, Lawrence Clift, and he mostly states the obvious, as well as a lot of interesting facts about, obviously, user-centered design, so ergonomics and anthropometrics and all that kind of stuff. But he somehow teaches a lot. And surprisingly, when he actually explains something, he's one of the only lecturers that makes sense. So that's really helpful. His lectures are actually a lot like this book, The Design of Everyday Things by Don Norman. So if you happen to know this book, you'll probably like his lectures. Or if you don't have it, you should probably get it because it genuinely helps a lot. In terms of submission, I think there was an online test which caught a lot of people by surprise in terms of the kind of question they asked. And also we had to design a ticketing machine in terms of ergonomics and anthropometrics instead of design, which is what theoretically we should be doing. But then this is more focused on actually getting data and putting it into a machine. And we had to submit a, I think a CAD, we didn't have to submit a CAD. We had to submit a sort of measured drawing of what it would look like. So that was actually a lot of fun. I had a really good group in that. Although 
I feel a useless module is still great fun overall. And last of all of the useless modules, which is materials, and this is actually like an overlap because it has lab sessions afterwards, which is quite useful in terms of getting marks, but in terms of lectures, it's kind of useless. All right, so this one actually started off seeming pretty difficult because they were teaching us a lot of chemistry, like lactic structures like FCC, BCC, HCP. But yeah, after that really scary introduction, I kind of just leveled down a bit and almost became like GCSE level chemistry and sort of A-level DT stuff, which is honestly not too hard. It's kind of common sense if you already know your science from GCSE and A-levels. In terms of submission, we have a good amount of online tests. I think there was like three of them. And then there's also a lab session, which was about a four or five weeks period, where it's like one lab session per week, which we had to write up a report for. And this was just honestly, nothing too difficult, but it was just really tedious and very time consuming. It's just, it was just annoying, but you get good credits for it. So these are the modules that are pretty much, like I said, the GCSE equivalent of hardness and workload. So you could literally just do all these assignments on the last week, or in fact, the night before, if you're really last minute about things and still achieve a really high grade. I've achieved, I think, a first average in most of those modules. And most of them are literally last minute, last week kind of stuff. And since they're so easy, I kind of really took advantage of these because you don't want to give away easy marks. So even though these are like last minute, you kind of want to get it done to a really high standard, which you can do very quickly. And then you just get loads of free credits to, you know, boost your grades up, I guess. So next up is the physically hard and painful credits. And I forgot to mention before, which I'll probably put the number of credits where each module is worth. These are almost worth the same amount as the previous ones. In fact, less per workshop if you think about it, because it's 20 credits, but three workshops as well as an online test. For me and probably most other students, we realized that the amount of time we put into this, it's worth like not a lot of credits compared to what we could do for the you know, easy credit modules, but onto what these actually are. So first, prototyping, which is pretty much A-level or GCSE DT, where you would make your projects with machines, except instead of making your project, they give you an engineering drawing of something you have to make, and then everyone in the group makes the same thing on separate machines. And essentially, they'll teach you how to use all the machines, even though you know how to use it, like the center lathe, the milling machine, drill bit, pillar pillar drills, brazing machine, um, bra brazers, bra brazing things, and also how to hand sand stuff. That's, I don't know why they teach you that, but I'm not gonna judge. So you actually have three workshops to do, and these are done within the first two terms. The first workshop we did was a multi-materials workshop, and we made this, no idea what this is, like a MP3 player, ancient Egyptian iPod Nano, don't know. And it's pretty much a lot of hand sanding of the wood, because you just have to hand sand all the fillets and chamfers and stuff. And we also use a few basic machines like the pillar drill, molding buttons, and spray painting, which I suck at spray painting, but this was essentially the easiest workshop. The next thing is machine workshop, where we made this PCB holder thing. I don't know, it's just like a fancy metal stand, I guess. But essentially what you get is a standard block of metal billet, rectangle thingy, and a rod. And you have to use essentially lathe, milling machines, pillar drills, and all that kind of stuff to make this. This workshop is the moderately hard workshop. And the last workshop is the fabrication workshop, which is where we made this wood plane. And this is probably the hardest and most physically painful one, where you have to cut, file, and polish majority of this metal thing by hand. And you also have to braise parts together and heat treat it. And But compared to the actual physical cutting and filing, that stuff becomes relatively easy. And this one was the most painful and hardest one to do, as well as being super loud and hurts your ears because of all the squeaking of filing and cutting metal. We also get a final test online, which is pretty much like a theory of like model making, like high fidelity, low fidelity, and also things to do with engineering drawings. Which reminds me, there's an important thing I need to talk about test in the very end. Next is electronics, and this one is painful. Theory-wise, it's almost the same as A-level physics with a tiny bit more on stuff like logic gates which isn't too hard to get a grasp on if you're good at physics already. We had two projects in a year, one involving taking apart and analyzing a product called the LJUSA from IKEA, 
which is this torch thing and seeing how it works in terms of electronics and I haven't got my logbook back for this to show you what I wrote so I can't explain and the next task was to design a seven segment LED display and a braille LED display in terms of logic aids to make them show what we wanted them to show through input signals. Both of them involved a report as well as writing a logbook and honestly these things take ages. You probably have a choice not to take ages because I know some people do it relatively quickly but for me it took about 30-ish hours or so to do each individual logbook and report and the only reason I know this is because I did mine pretty much on the last week last minute so I could just calculate how long I was awake for the whole week that's how I know it took me 30 hours but in the end it got me a good 86% which is 16% above a first so that's really good in terms of bumping my other grades up which is really helpful because we have an exam at the end of the year as well and like I said this is probably one of the most painful ones because it's essentially worth 2.5 credits one of these logbooks and it takes up 30 hours which means you only get five credits for around 60 hours worth of work and the exam is worth 50% of the whole module as well so essentially if I think about it it's pretty much like 10 questions in exam for like a whole logbook which is 10 minutes worth of working an exam is worth 30 hours of logbooking so I don't really know how that weighs out but I don't know they give weird credits for weird things. And next is mechanics. This is pretty much a level physics if you've done that, or if not, it's a bit of M1 maths, although it's more heavy on the physics than it is on the math. And once again, we were given two projects. One was to solve four questions in terms of like a report manner, which was actually relatively easy because you could copy friends and search stuff online. It's just, it was a really easy way to get into mechanics. But the second one was really difficult personally, and this wouldn't be for everyone, but for my group it was. And this is because we had to build a spaghetti bridge and you probably have seen this before building a spaghetti bridge truss structure to hold as much weight as possible in the middle which seemed really fun except for the fact that the lecturer screwed up my group so instead of being with my friends which i know i could work with i was stuck with other people and essentially some of the people i was stuck with were dead weight and literally they don't do anything in terms of opting to help the group or even when they have been assigned a task by the group leader which was me they choose not to do it and they don't submit anything at all give an excuse saying they've got other more important stuff to do which they probably do and they pretty much miss out on every meeting they're also completely clueless about the task so in the end when we have to do the presentation they have no idea what they're on about and essentially for my group we pretty much failed the whole course because of him because we weren't able to hand in the whole report in time because we didn't have his section of the report to hand in and therefore we got in late without his section as well. So I don't know how that's gonna pan out. I haven't got my grades yet. And like I said, electronics, this is literally worth like really minimal. We have an exam at the end of the year, which is again, worth like 40% of the whole module. So as a matter of fact, you could literally get zero for these courseworks aced exam, which shouldn't be too hard and still pass the module. So the stuff I said before is more equivalent to like A level workload where you could last week it and still achieve a really high grade if you can manage the stress and hurry of it but it's better to get ahead just to make sure that you get a good grade and now finally but the most important module of this whole year which is dp1 this is the module which you apply for design school thinking that you're going to be doing all year round but nope it's only four hours a week and probably is the biggest shock of your design education life. So DP1 is worth 40 credits. And since the whole year is worth 120 credits, that basically means that it's worth a third of the whole year, which is a lot. And not only that, it's only spread across two projects, which means that if you screw one project up, especially the later one, which is worth 60%, where the first one's only worth 40, you've pretty much screwed up your whole year and could potentially drop you down a whole grade or even worse, could mean you fail the year completely. In terms of first year, we don't actually learn a lot about it yet, but we have learned several basic things, such as like sketching and perspective and doing a lot of practice of that in the first semester. We also learned slightly how to render with Photoshop and how shadows are applied to different shapes and glossy reflection things, I don't know. Also CAD turns SolidWorks, so if you're thinking of learning a CAD software or if you have a CAD software, that you already know, try and move on to SOLIDWORKS because that's what we'll be using in design school. And how I like to think of this module is it basically forces our brains to come up with new interesting designs, which always ends up with us copying off Pinterest. And as a matter of fact, we actually do copy off Pinterest. Like it's not even a lie. Here's an email we literally got like a week ago. So yeah, we're not really good design students. So the first project we did in this module is called the speaker or radio project and this project pretty much hit most of us pretty hard because unlike a levels where you had a whole year to design here it's fast in fact it's literally only a few weeks so we should began the whole part designing whether we want a rugged or streamlined design for our speaker and then we had to complete a full design portfolio as well as a full scale blue foam model if you don't know what blue foam model is it's essentially this material which is super easy to model with but i definitely wasn't happy with my final submission and also the portfolio was made on like the last week so i had no time to make it 
any better. And this also taught me a super valuable lesson of this year, which is not to leave things last minute. Like most of the other stuff I said above, which is the A-level and GCSE workload stuff, you can leave last minute. DP1 is something that you cannot leave last minute because then you just won't finish at all. You can't even finish it to a low standard. You just wouldn't complete the work at all. That's just how hard this module is. The next project was a toaster and this one actually really pissed me off because unlike the previous one where they told us exactly what to hand in, which was a design portfolio and a blue foam model, this one we literally had no information about what we needed to hand in. We just were told we needed to design a toaster. This one was I believe a 12 week project, but since we had no idea what we were meant to do from the criteria sheet till five weeks beforehand, a lot of us pretty much started the whole project five weeks beforehand. So we had five weeks for a 12 week project. Again, this project was super hard and it took me as well as a lot of other students the last two weeks of just all nighters or like 90 minute naps per day, which is crazy. And in the end, I still wasn't able to complete the whole portfolio to the standards I wanted to. But compared to my first project, this is a great improvement of what I did. And I definitely felt like I've learned a lot of how to be more of a uni or industrial type designer instead of an A-level designer, because you know, when your portfolios are just full of words and chunks, they talk to you about this in design school. But yeah, in terms of this module, I would definitely call this a university level module, which is basically something yeah, I've never experienced in terms of workload until you actually get here. So now I've gone through all the modules and probably bored a lot of you. Let's talk about things that I've actually learned this year and useful things I can take to move on to next year to be a better student, which is essentially what first year is about. That's why this year doesn't count. Let's get to it, bring up that screen again. The first thing I learned was get ahead in terms of timing. And yeah, I know it sounds like everyone's gonna say, get ahead of your work and all that kind of stuff. But personally, being a non-perfect student, aka a slacker, and like most students, I tend to leave things to last minute, even if I don't plan to. And unlike what most lecturers or students think how it happens, I feel like the reason this happens to me is because I actually start ahead of time when I first get my work, then say I had my electronics logbook to do. Mechanics then gives me a super big coursework to do, and I'm like, okay, well, that's submitted before electronics, so I'm gonna leave electronics till the end. And then that happens with DP1 as well, and then all this workload kind of loads up on me, and I kind of prioritize what I think comes first. But in the end, that's really bad, because if mechanics was only a week hand in before electronics, that means I squashed five weeks of electronics into one week now, which I shouldn't be doing. And then same for DP1, what was 12 weeks was now five weeks because I squished all my electronics and mechanics beforehand. So personally for me, and I think a lot of students in design school, what we need to do is instead of bunching things up, we need to learn how to work in parallel and get everything done simultaneously. So we complete our tasks, but don't leave stuff to the very end. Jesus, I'm so thirsty from talking. It's already been like an hour of recording. Great. So second thing is know your A-level stuff because a few modules actually rely on your A-level stuff, especially mechanics and electronics. If you get that down, which is where I am right now, and obviously achieving a good grade in your A-levels, not to boast, but I got an A in physics and close to an A-star in math, but pretty much an A in math. It really helps with the exams which are gonna happen in the next weeks. Yeah, A-level knowledge is definitely very useful for the physics C, math C modules. Third thing is online tests. Now, I haven't mentioned this throughout the whole video. However, I've noticed for a fact that these online tests are made to cheat on, not cheat on, but essentially have the slides or lecture notes open next to you. Not your lecture notes, the lecture notes they gave you, the PowerPoints they gave you. Because a lot of these questions, you literally, even if you were to write them down, which is what I did in the beginning of the term, you won't write the information that's on the test down. So literally have the PowerPoints open next to the test, control F all the answers and just plug them all in. That gets you almost 90 or 100% like my friends have. But yeah, these online tests, most of them are made to be cheated on because there's no other way you'll get the answers. And this is why I don't want lecturers to watch my video. And the last but most important part of this video, after everything I've summed up, the biggest thing I've learned this year is make friends in design school, make them fast, but make sure you choose the right friends, the ones who work hard and work efficiently to high standards. Because this is cliche as hell, but from what I've experienced here, if you're surrounded by good students, or in this case, students who are good and hard working, you'll probably get your work done in time as well, because your schedule will be matched to their schedule, and if they're on time, you'll be on time. Or else you'll be like me, and probably 80% of the other students in design school, who end up with a week or two of all nighters at the very end, end up super grumpy, don't get your work done to the highest standards you can, and don't achieve the highest grades you can. Or even worse, you have nothing to submit, or you're late to the submission and get zero. You're also helps you later on when you have group work because then you can go with your friends who actually work instead of being matched with random people who are probably dead weight which is what happened to me in mechanics and trust me this is really bad because they get the same grade as you even though you did all the work which means that you probably get half the grade you would have got and they essentially get i can't even put a percentage on this because you can't time zero by anything to get a thing but they get a much higher grade than they're meant to get wow an hour 30 minutes of just pure talking to my camera 
how sad is this? Anyways, if you're one of my friends, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Or probably not, because it's super boring. You don't know what I'm on about. And if you're a potential student, I hope you found this useful. And I'll catch you guys next time.